So the camera store is celebrating 20 years in Calgary, which is very exciting. This is where you can go and geek out about photography, lenses, all that good stuff. I, of course, am too poor to purchase anything I really, really want, so I just settled with some dumb books. Okay, enough foolishness. Let's go home. There's no way around the fact that what I'm about to do is fairly gross. I've had a medical condition for ever, ever since I was born, where I have narrow ear canals, which essentially just means that my ears don't flush out like they normally should. Like normally, little bits of dirt and stuff get in there, you get earwax, and it just kind of falls out of your ear naturally, or when you kind of wash your face and ears in the shower. Mine don't do that, so they get impacted. And so there's this hard, crusty, weird earwax that slowly makes me start to lose hearing in, in both sides, both ears. And occasionally what I need to do is flush them out. So how do I do that? I have to pour like cooking oil in my ear and just let it sit there for a few minutes and then I try and squirt it out. This is kind of a, a couple day process of pour it in, wait a couple of minutes, squeeze it out. Um, as, the, as the oil seeps into the, the, the crustiness, it, it will eventually just kind of fall out as like a big globule out of my ear. Aren't you so glad you're watching this channel? All right, there is the oil. That's going to be the water. Well, I can't hear out of my right ear currently, but I'm sure that soon too will pass. I'm off now to play board games because that's just the kind of crazy lifestyle I live. Alright, so I've come to this realization, I don't know if anyone watching these videos is also a Gilmore Girls fan. As I've said in the past, it was something that I sort of watched when I was younger, but didn't really keep up with, so I'm like pounding through these on Netflix before the new miniseries comes out. And everyone is always, if you're a Gilmore Girl fan, you're always like, Team Dean or Team Jess. And in these early seasons, because I'm older now, maybe looking at it not quite from the same place, I'm neither. I think they're both awful for Rory. And I just want her to dump both of them and stop pining over them because she's way better off without either of them in her life. Hashtag Team Rory. Yeah, look how disgusting this is. This is just some of the earwax that came out of my ear today. Uh, just a couple more days of this before I can hear again. Well, the first actual thing on my agenda today, besides being super gross, is I'm going to check out a friend of mine's new creative space that he has here downtown. So, let's go check it out. What a great meeting. I uh, learned a lot, and there's a lot of balls rolling. Unfortunately, I'm supposed to be juggling them, so... Whoa, look at them all. <laughs> so, as a bit of a reward to myself, I've decided to go and watch not one but two movies tonight. And unfortunately, I walked past the bookstore, this vile seductress behind me, and uh, had to buy some stuff. And so, just in case you're wondering, I picked up this team of rivals from probably the best looking historian I've ever seen. And uh, the third book in this series that I'm quite enjoying and loving. More reviews on their way as I finish them. First of all, I'm like the worst person to go and see a horror movie. I did go by myself, but I'm staying in a row surrounded by teenagers, content on using their phones while the movie is playing, and of course I just get angrier and angrier and say nothing because I'm a polite Canadian. I went and saw Don't Breathe, which is this horror movie about these groups of kids that goes in and tries to rob from this blind guy who turns out to be much more capable than you would think a blind guy could be. And for the first, I would say two thirds, I was totally into this movie. It was set up well, it reminded me a little bit of Attack the Block in that you start off with villains, in quotes, who turn out to be your heroes. It then kind of devolves into having way too many twists and turns by the end, and I was like, oh my gosh, how 
is this even still going on? How is this guy surviving? And I'm almost starting to feel more sympathetic towards him than I was the uh, the protagonists. Not not completely and not totally, but I feel like there was a great movie that was wrapped up in this, and all I got was kind of like an okay, decent film uh, instead of something that I was really on board with for the first little bit, which is kind of depressing and disappointing for something that I was enjoying in the first place. Anyways, you can see it's busy behind me. It is a Friday night. And now I get to go and see Kubo and the three strings. Or two strings. There's a there's a certain amount of strings. And what I mean by saying that I'm the worst person to go and see a horror movie is that I jump at every single jump scare and then scare the rest of my row. The teenage girls beside me were much more less than impressed. That's a correct sentence, right? I, I talk English well. Oh man, you know, every so often a film comes out that feels like it was made just for me. And Kubo and the Two Strings is exactly that. It combined, I think, the very best of animation, of video games, and of myth. And what I took away from it is the power of storytelling the power of, 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 of teaching out what we've learned and how the best stories honor those people that we love and that we hold dear to our hearts so that they never ever actually leave us, how we can use those to teach the newest generation. And I think the most powerful message is that it's never too late to change our own story if we feel like we're going down the wrong path or we think we've lost our way. I think this is just a really, really special movie that everyone should go and see and I'm so glad that this is what kind of closed out my summer because it's not been that great of a year for movies, in my humble opinion. And this just shows me that the power of cinema is still there for those who have that spark of imagination. So I, I'm very thankful of Leica, the studio who, who did this because it's restored my faith in, in great stories. I'll see you again next week.